Last month, you all called me out for my dislike of the new Army Painter Fanatic paints. You told me I was a bad painter, told me I was lying just for the drama, and I just wanted to take a second and say, thank you. You made me reevaluate my painting setup, and now I'm going to save you in your miniatures from problems that you didn't even know existed. Texture buildup, difficulty blending, and difficulty with fine details. All right, let's get real about these paints. When I tested out these paints, I said that they dried very quickly on the model and caused buildup of texture. So, did I lie? Nope, not a chance. However, that does not mean that I didn't do anything wrong. Here's the scoop. Life has been throwing curveballs at me left and right, and amongst the chaos, I forgot one crucial detail that could have fixed almost every problem I was facing. I forgot to turn on my humidifier. Even with my wet palette or adding water or thinner medium to my paints, it just couldn't keep up with how dry my office gets in the winter. So if my struggles seem like ones you might be having, then you can fix this with an easy $30 purchase of a humidifier. Just plug it in 30 minutes before you wanna start painting and see if it does the trick. How long you'll need to run your humidifier for depends on how dry the air is and the size of your room. But if your wet palette starts to look like soup, that's a really good sign that you should turn it off. I turned on the humidifier and used my new Army Painter Fanatic paints a bunch on my Resin Beast piece for Adepticon. So while I still don't think they're revolutionary, my previous problems were all solved. Okay, so how do you test your paints before you put them on a model? I've got two trusty tricks up my sleeve, the pull and dot test. First off, grab a bit of your undiluted paint and give it a test run on your hand or glove. Pay close attention to how it behaves. How much pressure do you have to apply and how far does the paint pull across your hand? Or maybe there's plow throw on the sides of your paint application. This will serve as our baseline. Next, it's time to mix in some thinner medium. I usually create a new puddle with a two to one ratio of paint to thinner. Dip your brush into your new mixture, loading it halfway, gently rolling to achieve a perfect point. If it's too loaded, you'll notice that your brush will lack that crisp point. Test this new consistency right beside your base point. You should find that the paint comes off the brush with the lightest of touches and pulls further, approximately half again as far as the undiluted version. But here's the kicker. We're aiming for that smooth application with intensity and opacity as close as we can to our baseline. You may have to test multiple mixtures to find the perfect balance. Remember, each paint color and brand behaved differently, so you might have to run this test for every shade every single time. But the more you do it, the better you'll get. Okay, the dot test. The dot test is crucial for those delicate details, especially on the eyes. Once you've thinned your paint, it's time to give it a gentle dot test on your hand. The trick here is to achieve a fine dot with minimal effort. If your paint struggles to leave a dot behind, it's a sign it needs to be thinned. But again, we still want it to be as opaque as possible. If it blobs off the brush in a big puddle, then the paint is either too thin or your brush is overloaded. Remember, we only want to fill the brush halfway to keep that fine point. We'll get back to painting in a second, but first, let's talk about BetterHelp Online Therapy, the sponsor of this video. Between removing my father-in-law from life support, my grandfather dying just completely unexpectedly, it's just been really stressful. I almost didn't go to Adepticon this year because I was just so stressed I was almost crying. Therapy can help provide an outside perspective to the hurricane that is grief. And grief is not something you have to face alone. So if you think therapy might be the next step for you, then BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and completely online. 
A brief survey could help you match with a therapist in no time. If you're like me and trying to work through all of the unexpected problems that life can throw your way, therapy can help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash miniwitch for 10% off your first month. All right, back to painting. Problem. Your paint isn't going where you want it, and those tiny details seem impossible. Mochi! No. Along with consistency, you need to make sure you have a good brush. A brush with a sharp point is essential for achieving those tiny details. Here you can see this brush might look fine, but when we compare it to this brush here, you can see the elongated tip that we're looking for for a perfect brush. As your brushes wear down with use, be mindful of their condition. When a brush starts to lose its sharp point, it's time to repurpose it as a base coat. Reserve your sharper brushes for intricate work to maintain the precision over time. Additionally, we want the brush to have a good belly. The belly is what holds our liquid paint. If your brush is too small, the paint can actually dry on your brush before you even get it to the model. I recommend a size one or two for their versatility. The second trick might come as a surprise. It's having a good painting handle. Using a painting handle, especially one with an arm like this from Game Envy, will enhance your ability to execute fine detail work with precision and ease. I love the larger base of this hobby holder as it allows me to rest my wrist against the grip. And then I can rest my hand against the arm. For extra stability, consider resting your elbow on the table or on your knee while painting. The problem. Your paint doesn't last long enough on your wet palette. Supposedly, your wet palette is supposed to keep your paint wet and working for hours or even days. But we've all heard or experienced paint drying on our palette or turning into a soupy mess on our palette. So what's the deal? First, it all comes down to the air in your workspace. And second, it's just not realistic to expect paints to stay pristine indefinitely. If the paint is turning soupy, try a dehumidifier or use less water in your wet palette. If the paint dries, try a humidifier and add more water to your wet palette. But to be honest, if you find yourself battling with paints, it might just be best to start over. Sure, you can try reactivating dry paints with thinner medium and mixing your soupy paints back together in an attempt to reincorporate them. But if they aren't working, they aren't working. While it sucks to throw out paint, your model is so much more important than making sure you get every last bit of paint off your palette. If you're finding yourself having problems with your wet palette beyond what I've covered here, be sure to check out the ultimate guide to wet palettes. If you like what I do, like, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.